All right. Okay. So welcome everyone. This is Bible study and we're going to first start with Jeremiah. All right. The book of Jeremiah. And I love Jeremiah. So does God. Jeremiah was the weeping prophet, but because God showed him things what would happen, what was to come, what is. So we're going to start because most of the prophets are here and most prophets follow me on my page. Okay. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hikaliah, of the priests that were in Antioch in the land of Benjamin, verse 2. To whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Ju Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign, verse 3. It came also in the day of Joachim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of Zechariah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah upon the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. God says that the children of Israel, we've been in captivity. We've been in captivity of our mind, our soul, and ever since COVID hit, that, that was a hit. God said, I'm going to allow it. I'm going to allow it because it's going to, guess what? It's going to expose everybody to everybody. Yeah. Verse uh, four, it says, then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, now this is for every last one of us. Verse 5, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thy came is forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. This is for everybody. Not It doesn't matter if you're a prophet or not. He said, I know you in the womb. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. Verse 7, but the Lord said unto me, say night that I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee. And whatsoever I commend thee, thou shalt speak. God says the prophets are not speaking. They're speaking out of their own heart, out of their own mind, for money, for honey, and for funny. We're supposed to speak life to each other. We're supposed to speak life and love to each other like never before. Now I want to go into Jeremiah 4. Y'all going to have to flow with me because I feel the intensity. It means I got to stay focused and do it the way he want me to. Okay, chapter 4, and we're going to start. He told me to start from verse 20. So we'll move over to 4, Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 20. It says, destruction upon destruction is cried for the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly are my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment. God says, thus said the Lord, it feels like the whole land is spoiled because it is. It is their time. But God said there's a remnant in the land. And this is a time where the remnant should stand up. The reason why it's been so hard is because God is pushing us to our destiny. We haven't been doing what we're supposed to do. All of us. We've been doing what we want to do. And I start with Deanna first. That stuff happened to me. You no, know, it wasn't fair. But I understand God said it was needed. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Sometimes God allow things to happen to you because it'll push you into another realm to where it's just you and God. Stop blaming people. Stop blaming what happened. Stop blaming this. It is time for face to face. God said, me and you, you my child. You my child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So everybody has to have that relationship back with God. This is not just church. This is not just a building. This is with me and God. Have you been there lately? Have you been on your face? The most powerful position of prayer. You want power? I dare you to put a rug down or lay on a, just lay on your face. I guarantee you, first of all, you're going to cry. Let me tell you what happened, what God showed me when I started doing that, which was in Sacramento in 2010, 11, actually 2006. Because I don't know why I'm going here, but I feel led by the Spirit. Don't you know you can pray away death? I never forget my grandfather was dying. I didn't even know how powerful it was. And I said, God, I'm not ready for him to die. And God said, lay on your, lay on your face. They called me that day. I'm not lying. I didn't even go to work. I laid on my face the whole night. At 630, the phone rang. He said, that's them. Guess what? They said he going to make it. He lived another year. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. I'm being ah, real with y'all. He lived another year. And, and that's when I realized. I said, God, what happened? He said, because you went to that threshing floor all night long. And it wasn't about you. You asked me. God moved. Not, I don't want him to die. Not this. I did say that. But when I went to the floor, I gave him reverence. I gave him the glory. God, you. You decide, God. And that's what we got to go back to. We've been looking for people. Things, places, money. Y'all know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. To take the place of God. So God said, I, I need you back on that floor. Let me put it this way. It's time to tear down the stage. Everybody, look, look. Everybody, everybody want to be a star. A stage, he said, and build back the altar. The brazen altar. That's when you go back to, on the floor to God. All right, let me continue. He says, how long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? 
22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sadish children and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Verse 23. I beheld the earth and lo, it was without form and void mm -hmm. and the heavens and they had no light. Verse 24. I beheld the mountains and lo, they trembled. All the hills moved lightly. Verse 25. I beheld and lo, there was no man and all of the birds of heavens were fled. Verse 26. I beheld and lo, the fruitful place was in the wilderness and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fist anger. Verse 27. For thus hath the Lord said, the whole land should be desolate yet will I not make a full end. Everybody's talking about rumors and rumors of war. He said, not yet. You are still in the land. L let's go back to Genesis. God made the earth. He says, I give you dominion. We have not been actually usurping our spiritual authority in our homes, in our businesses, mm -hmm. on the jobs. We're not declaring the word of God. We've been talking the situation, but we haven't been declaring the word. How did Jesus win? Anybody can answer. The word. The word. We have been talking so much of the problem, and that's okay because we need to talk it out sometime. But truth be told, it is time. He said, it is written that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You want your situation to change? Quit telling this one, quit telling that one, quit trying to manipulate this or that or even people and go straight to God. Mm. We got to go back to God. That's where we all are. Go back to God. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Now I want to actually go back. I want to go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. And if anybody understands why I'm reading 2 Timothy, it's going to, it's going to tell it everything. It's going to tell it all. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. 2 Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse, 7, verse 2. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, Grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Verse 3. I thank God who I'm served for my forefathers with a pure conscience. Uh oh, how many of us have pure conscience? You know what that means. You're doing the right thing. You're saying the right thing. You're moving the right way. You have a holy life for real. Don't, don't, you ain't got to say nothing. That's between you and God. But is it real or is it Memorex? Mm. Okay, come on, somebody. That without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers day and night. It is time for us to start praying day and night. We just, we just, we've learned church, but we haven't learned kingdom. Mm. Jesus went to the mountain and prayed 40 days and 40, and he was Jesus. What are we doing? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Verse 4. Greatly desire to see thee, being mindful of the tears that I may be filled with joy. Uh, I didn't even say what the message was. Bible study. Don't let man or anyone take your joy. Let me give you the definition of joy. No matter what happens. You see, I hate when people say I'm happy all the time. Because guess what? Happiness means something has to happen. But joy of the Lord means regardless of what happened, God, I don't like it. I don't like it, God. It doesn't feel good, but I'm going to handle the joy of the Lord. That means if anything that he's allowed that hits you, that hurts you, you're not supposed to be taking it out on everybody else. You're not supposed to be angry. And that's anybody. Because sometimes that's what we do. I don't like this. You are what that is. That's pride. That's like, God, how dare you? How dare you? Ask God. He's God. He allow what he allow. And he do what he do because he's God. So what am I saying? We have to give God back the glory. Not man. Not this one. And not that one. We've given too much to man. And I mean that. Hallelujah. Let's, let's go. When I call, verse 5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, that first dwelt in the grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that is in thee also. God is trying to get us to walk in our calling. I tried that thing. I told y'all, I heard God when I was, what, 12 years old. I didn't know. I told mom, I said, that's an imaginary voice. Then at 16, I can honestly say I heard God. And I wished to God, I said yes, but I didn't. I told God, look, I got things to do. And if I could tell any young person, I wish I'd have never said that. I wish I'd have said, God, what must I do? Because y'all know if y'all been following me and y'all have, I've been through. And I think if I'd have said yes at 16, 
I probably would have been halfway there where I'm supposed to be at 54. Come on, somebody. I hope y'all catching this. All right, verse 6, it says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou should stir up the gift of God. Are we truly stirring up the gift of God? Or are we just paying attention to our problems? The people that don't like us, the people that are not there. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm reminded of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Can you imagine you're about to be arrested and everybody, I mean, these are 12 apart, they, especially Peter. I, I'm there with you. If anything happened, I'm going to be right there. Jesus said, before the crock crows three times, you will deny me, Peter. Come on, somebody. I, I'm, I, I'm asking you to walk with me. How many times you really depended on somebody and they let you down? Jesus never threw them away. As a matter of fact, he said, I forgive you. He, he, he didn't even, as a matter of fact, he didn't even bring it up when he appeared to him. He just appeared to him and said, not be empowered. He did not, you know you left me. P Peter, you know you lied. Oh, come on, somebody, because we're quick to put that on each other. What you didn't do. He never brought that up. He said, not be empowered. Because guess what? They had already had guilt. They didn't need Jesus. Oh, oh come on, somebody. Am I down your street? How many times you try to make people feel guilty? Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Let me keep on going. Let me keep on going. By the putting of our hands. Let's continue. I do like the older people do. You know. Okay. So, I'm at actually, so first, second Timothy, for those that are just joining us, second Timothy, and I'm at verse seven. Now, this is a real, real big one right now, especially right now. Verse seven says, for God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. When I was in that place, I had to find a Bible. I never forget, the, the, <laughs> they call it the house mother. She had a Spanish Bible. I said, girl, I can't be reading Spanish now. And so I finally found one and he said, I need you to just... He said, because guess what? The enemy, when he hits you with anything, the first thing he puts you in fear. When COVID came, I'm not saying it's not real, but everybody got in fear. And he says, wait a minute, because fear going to cast out your faith. The enemy knows what he's doing. Come on, somebody. The lion then, Daniel, the three Hebrew boys, they faced it with faith and not fear. We're supposed to face every situation with faith. I know it looks big. As a matter of fact, let's go here. David. David and Goliath. He looked big. He said, you come to me with all this stuff. He said, but I come to you in the name of God. It is time. But you can't do that unless you've been with God. Ooh, ooh. Hallelujah. Let's continue. He says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. You feel powerful? A lot of people don't. I'm going to tell you right now, so many people was instead up in there and, and it got to the point where I told y'all the first two days I cried and God said, you can't cry no more because they're drawing off of you. So I would wait late in the night and cry because people would draw off of you. But so many people are hurting in this hour. And you want to know why? Because we're trying to do it in our own strength and it cannot be done. You will wear yourself out because flesh cannot sustain flesh. Let me break that thing down. Whatever you start in the flesh, you got to you gotta uh, sustain it. Because if you didn't go to God and say, God, is this what I should be doing? God is not obligated to sustain anything we start without him. I'm going to say that again. Anything you start without God, don't depend on God. But anything you start with God, he's obligated because he's the one started. So whenever you find yourself in a situation, always say, who started it? Because if you started, you in trouble. You better repent and just turn back, double, double back. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let me continue. Verse 8 says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. I don't know what it is, but in this season and even in life, because I used to do it too, when I saw people of God going through stuff, the first thing we say is they must have did something. Mm. You must have not read your Bible. The Bible says that in this world you should have much tribulations. But be of good cheer. Yeah. How are we going to be of good cheer? You want to know why? We have to get in this word. This word strengthens you. And not only that, do not forsake the assembling of each other. You see, just this, the people that are here tonight, we are strengthening each other. That's what we're supposed to do. We may not always agree. We may not always sometimes. Let's be, oh, I'm about to be real up in here. How many times you have gotten mad and said, I don't like them. And then about an hour later, I love you. Because... <laughs> I could be, you could be married, you could be friends, you could be sisters. You're going to have those times. 
But be careful what comes out of your mouth, says God. Because remember, you ain't always acting good either. Oh, right. Lord, let's That's keep right. on going. Let's keep going. Eight. Verse 9. Who has saved us and called us into a holy calling. Not according to our works, <laughs> but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. A holy calling, not according to our works. We have so many people, and I've been guilty too. Well, God, I've done this. As a matter of fact, when that situation happened, God, I've been preaching. God, I've been teaching. God, I've been reaching. You saw me go to Hawaii. You saw what I did, God. I didn't go to Louis Vuitton. I, I, I went fed them and took a thousand. I, I mean, I was bringing up everything. He said, they ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You didn't hear what I said. Mm -hmm. Because this your portion. You didn't hear what I just said. We want the good, but sometimes God will allow the bad. And in that situation, you don't start attacking. You don't start feeling bad. You know what you do? God, what am I supposed to learn? What am I supposed to do? Who am I supposed to be? Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let's continue. I, I know it's tight, but it's right. Verse 10. But it is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who had abolished <coughs> death and had brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Verse 11. Whereunto I'm appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Verse 12. For which I cause also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. I really, sometimes I think we really are ashamed. I was ashamed of what happened. And then God had to tell me, say, you forgot my son got arrested for nothing. I mean, he, you know how God will bring up everything. There are times you're going to suffer. It doesn't mean God is trying to break you. He's honestly trying to build you. I keep going back to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. I remember they say that he was actually sweating blood. I don't know anybody other than him that is recorded that sweated blood. But I love what he said. Nevertheless, he said, Father, if this cup could pass from me. There are times that we've said that. We've begged. We've asked. But he said, nevertheless. How many times do we really do that? God, your will, not my will. I, I don't like it. It doesn't feel comfortable. And, and I don't think it's fair. Because truth be told, we don't tell each other. But we be having some conversations with God. I know people that have cursed God. I know people that have burnt the Bible. Come on, somebody. You're not going to tell everybody what you did and what you said. God, it's not fair. Even Job. Job said, I, 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 I shouldn't have been born. He said, wait a minute. Where were thou when I created the earth? Who are you? So too many times we're focusing on the situation when we're really supposed to focus on the word of God and go inwardly and see what God is trying to pull out of you. Because I can honestly say I'm not the same. And you, I, I, I don't even get on social media that much no more. Everybody knows that because people have been inboxing. Are you okay? Are you okay? I'm okay. I just know now that there's a different route. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And I'm, I'm not the only one. God is trying to get your attention. And most of the time you're blaming this one. You're blaming that one. And you're saying this. And he's really trying to make you see you. Because how can you truly preach to others if you don't see who you are? David. Oh, I'm reminded of Nathan. David, he loved Bathsheba. But Bathsheba was somebody else's wife, right? That's right. And so David, he was such in a reprobate state. Let's talk about the reprobate state. Because reprobates are not sinners out there. Reprobates are Christians that have swayed, that have want to do their own thing. But but they act like it's God. So so he put her, her husband in the front and, and she got killed. And you know, he took her and married her and everything else. But God always sent a prophet. And a prophet don't always have to be a legitimized prophet. It could be somebody off the street and God will tell you about yourself. You know what I just said. Because we're looking for these famous prophets or even a prophet. God will send, God will send a homeless man to tell you, you know you're wrong. Oh, come on, somebody. Or oh, better yet, like somebody brought a shirt the other day. Y'all ain't right. So anywho, Nathan gave him a parable. He said, this man had so much money, he had so much, and, and they had this other man that just had a sheep, and, and you know the man with all the money, he took the man with the sheep, sheep, and, and David got anger. David said, that man should be killed. Nathan said, that man is you. Mm. David didn't even know. I'm reminded by Samson. Samson kept playing with Delilah. Mm. Oh, okay, you think it's just a name. Delilah. We all had Delilahs. There's something in your life that's a lie. But we love it. And I, I, that was my first sermon. And I looked through the scriptures because Samson kept telling her she loved, she, he loved her. But not once did she say she loved Samson. 
And I couldn't understand how could Samson keep going and knowing it was a trap. Because he was in a reprobate state. He wanted what he wanted. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So what happened is the Lila, that lie, ended up setting him up. But this is what I didn't understand. Her power overpowered the God in him. He told her the secret. I'm going somewhere with this. The enemy is after your secret, sister. The enemy is after your secret, sister. The enemy is after your secret, brother. The enemy is after... Because guess what? He's unauthorized to touch us. But we could give it to him. From your authority to your anointing to you. Kept playing with Delilah. And to he didn't even know that God had left him. Mm. Y'all don't understand how I feel. When I was in that place, I thought God had left me. Because the first three days, I really didn't feel him. And I said, Lord, did I mess up? And I think he did it on purpose. And then, of course, one day he started, and I was like, okay, you haven't. No. But sometimes I won't speak to you to let you know the relationship, if it's real or not. You see, if you really have a real relationship, you know he, he, he's somewhere around. He might not be right because uh, you don't hear what I just said. But so many people are losing their relationship, Samson, that you don't even know that God had left you. Mm. Now, I never could understand this. So l let's just go ahead and end up that story with Samson. So in the end, if you know anything about the story, Samson killed more people than he ever killed. Mm. But I could never understand why he said, let me die. And so I asked God, I said, God, why did Samson say, let me die? He said, Deanna, because one of the things that the enemy took from him was his vision. <laughs> Come on, somebody. The enemy is after your vision because God will give you vision because God needs to know that you know who you are. Because anytime you don't know who you are, Oh, then the enemy could come and make you do all kind of stuff, Samson. Yes, yes. All kind of stuff, David. All kind of stuff. Hello. Yeah. So, so he's after your vision. So you have to have tunnel vision in this hour. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's continue. Let's continue. Verse 12, he says, For the one cause which I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I am known who I believe and am persuaded that he is able to Keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. You have to hold on to your faith. I don't care what you go through. I don't care who leave you. I don't care who stay. I don't care how you feel. The enemy is after your faith. And faith is connected to confidence. So whenever you start losing your confidence, you need to check your faith level. Mm. Because once your faith and confidence is the that's it, you'll start doing everything, Samson. You, you'll start messing with with Delilah, you you start believing that lie, and, and, and hold on, I need y'all to know something. I had nothing prepared tonight. When I got dressed, God say, "I'm gonna give it to you as you go." So this is definitely God. This is not me trying to concoct something or make anyone feel bad. Hallelujah! I say Hallelujah. Let's continue. Verse thirteen. Hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me in faith. And love which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 14. That good thing which was committed unto thee. Keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. You know what that good thing is? Your relationship. Mm -hmm. The enemy is after your relationship. He'll send whomever. Whatever. However. And whenever. Anything to trip you up. And understand where we at. And that's why it's been some hard testing. God allows what he allows. And sometimes, you know, to be honest with you, I think we do get arrogant. How could you let this happen, God? Why? That's why people get mad at God. They really get mad at God. And God say, hold on, hold on. You do know I'm God. You do know this a test. You do, everybody in that Bible had to go through tests. But it was after the test what manifested. Power, love, and strength, Joseph. Look how Joseph's brothers did him. They threw him in the pit. But, but what people don't understand, we always talk about what Joseph's brothers did. But tonight, we're going to talk about what Joseph did. Joseph talked too much. Joseph was supposed to tell everybody his dream. But I, I, I see y'all bowing down to me. You'll get mad too. Oh, uh -uh, really? Even his dad, he was arrogant. And his dad said, even me? Yeah, even you, dad. So God was like, hmm. This is true. But because you already told them and they might plot and plan, I'm like, I have to let it happen now, Joseph. Joseph didn't know what hit him. Nothing just happens in your life. Oh, 
nothing. Everything is ordained and written. So when, when those things happen, and that's what I had to remember, and nothing just happens, that let me know that God is still in control. Anything that has happened in your life, it was allowed by God. The enemy can't touch you without God. As a matter of fact, this is what he said. Go ahead and test her. Go ahead and test him. But touch not their life. And if you know anything about God, if you hold on and be strong and be obedient, mm -hmm. he'll bless you. Not, not just with money, but he'll save that person you need saved. He'll heal that person. He'll bring that person to God. He'll expose that person. Oh, you know what I'm saying. Because you have to understand, the Bible says that the enemy... He transcends and transfers himself into an angel of light. There are some people that are in our lives, walk like God, walk like God, talk like God, ain't God at all. all right, preach. Hello. Preach. So then you have to pray that prayer that people don't like praying. God, show me their spirit. Mm. God will wake you up at 3 o'clock in the morning. God will give you a dream. God will let it happen. Now, if we ignore it, that's a dangerous thing because now, since you ignore God, God say, since you ignore it, I may ignore it too. That means, oh, I'm about to go here. When you're in sin, it's within. You give up your authority. So now God has to sit back and let that thing roll out through because you have just broke your covenant. So now God has to, he, oh, I'm about to teach this thing. God has given you dominion. So what you allow, God has to allow. Yes. People be thinking, well, why couldn't God stop it? Why did you start it? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Mm. My, my, my. So people don't understand God. But what God will do, God will intervene. That's enough. So God don't do bad things. Let's get that straight. Because so many people think God, no, but he allowed the enemy. Because guess what you did? Anytime you are in sin, you are authorizing the enemy to touch your life. That's why some people, even in church, have died. That's what happened to Samson. That's what happened to a couple of great men of God that we know. We don't like the way they died. They were powerful. The enemy comes for you when you are powerful. Come on, somebody. And that's what I kept holding on to. I said, God, God he said, Deanna, remember who you are. Because he knows who you are, too. Hello. When you are a threat and you are powerful... He will concoct things to come after you. And God will allow it because God says, Romans 8, 28. He think he's going to destroy you. But that thing that you think is going to take you out, I'm going to use that to bless you. I'm going to use that to grow you. I'm going to use that to expose you too. Uh-oh. 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 Because you've been playing with me on the low, low. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. It's getting, oh, it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. And I'm not Nelly. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> yeah, I knew you was going to say, I wanted to laugh at you, my brother. <laughs> verse 16. Verse 16. We do have a live audience, everybody. Praise God. Praise God. All right. So, verse 16 says, The Lord gives mercy unto the house of an Ophirus, and off refresh me, and was not ashamed of my chain. Don't you know, after the, the trial, after the test, God said, <sighs> Blow a fresh wind on you. Oh, glory. But, uh, but I'm going to tell you. Praise God. Praise God. Don't get angry with God. Don't get angry with people. But get into a surrenderance mode. Mm. God, I surrender. I mean, tell the truth. How can you fight God? Because if it's God for real, you ain't going to win. And truth be told, even if it's the devil, you ain't going to win. Because God got to stop that thing. But I promise you one thing. You'll never find a more loving God than God. Not in a person. Not in a place. Not in money. Not in honey. And not in funny. So, let's read this last one. It says, verse 18. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. And in how many things he ministered unto me at Amphius, thou knowest very well. And I want to go to chapter 2. It says, oh, hallelujah, I got I to gotta work this thing out, y'all. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of the among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who should be able to teach others also. You can't teach nobody if you're not faithful to nobody. You know why the church is in trouble? So many unfaithful preachers and teachers. But we're not supposed to judge them and bash them. 
That's God's job. Come on, somebody. I just said something. Keep your mouth off people. Keep your mouth off people. Keep That's God's servant. Remember David and uh, um, Saul, King Saul? David could have killed King Saul. And then the young warrior that killed King Saul came back, and he was just happy. And I killed him. And David said, and you wasn't you weren't scared to touch the Lord's anointed? Hello. Mm, mm, mm. What am I saying? Even if they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, that's not your business. That's God's business. And you can't do that because God will turn it on you. Hallelujah. 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 Let's continue. Let's continue. Verse 3. Oh, this is a good one. Thou endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. It's written right there. Thou therefore endure hardness. That says so much right there. If it's hard, it's supposed to be hard. He said endure it. But how do you endure it? You get together just like we're getting together so we can strengthen each other by the word of God, by the love of God, by the power of God. It is only in the healing, in the presence of God, deliverance in the presence of God. You can't find that anywhere else unless the presence are there. So you have to endure hardness. It's going to be hard. But trouble don't last always, God says. So be strengthened by that. And I'm going to go ahead and end it here because I I, I, I feel it. I feel it. I, I told y'all. Well, I didn't tell y'all. I tried to. <laughs> All right. Let me end it with this. The fourth verse, chapter 2. No man that warred entangled himself with the affairs of this life. One thing I had to realize... And God brought it back to me. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and then everything else will be added unto you. That is the way we're supposed to live. We don't always do that. Mm -hmm. But it is required. And I don't care how you live, what you say, what you do. It is still required. He wants to be first. And if he's not first, he's a jealous God, the Bible says. So I pray that we go back. To just loving God first. God, I repent. God, I'm sorry. God, show me how to do this thing. I don't know how to do this thing. I don't trust nobody. As a matter of fact, it's hard to go to church because if I tell them my business, they might preach about it. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. So you got to really just talk to God. And I'm not saying every church is bad. Let me clarify this. That is not what I'm saying. But your first relationship must be with God. Yes. It's yes. between you and God. You know, I will say this and I'll end it with this. Before, when I used to go to church all the time, they used to say, why are you so happy? I said, because I've already had church. I'm not lying. I would be praising, dancing. So by the time I got to church, that was just a second part for me. And I'm not saying everybody got to do it like that. But that's how much I love God. Because you're going to find out one thing. That's all you got is God. I'm not saying we don't love each other. But we can't always be there for each other. Let's be honest. There are times that life is going to put you to where you are by yourself. You feel like yourself. And I think that's on purpose from God to let you know I'm your God. Not this one. Not that one. Not whatever. So with that being said, we're going to end this short Bible study because I know it was, it was, it was, it was, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. Y'all know what time it is. It's been a long time. God set me up tonight. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. He set me up. Mm -hmm. But I liked it. Because I had no idea this was going to happen like this. So God bless you all. Y'all know what time it is. Roll our soldiers for that is truly who we are. Have a blessed one.